Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. This week, I'm gonna be starting a new series on my channel. This is gonna be focused on PC emulation. We're gonna be using LaunchBox and mainly RetroArch. Now you could use RetroArch by itself if you'd like to, but I love the way LaunchBox organizes everything for us. So let's talk about LaunchBox for one second here. It's free, but there's a paid version. The paid version is $50 for life, or $20 for a year. In my opinion, it's worth it. If you buy it, I don't make anything off of it. If you don't buy it, it's not any skin off of my back. I'm not affiliated with LaunchBox at all. I just love the product. So we'll just scroll down. And um, for the paid version, you get something called Big Box. It's actually pretty cool. It looks really good. This is not my video here, but I'm sure they're not going to get too upset if I show you a little bit of it. So yeah, looks like hyperspin, track mode, something like that. But the cool thing about LaunchBox is they have their own built-in scraper that will grab all your data for the game, all the artwork for the game, most of the videos if you sign up with EMU movies. It's all around very easy to use and it's constantly updated. Go ahead and grab the free version, try it out. If you don't like it, you don't have to use it, but I wanted to start making a few tutorials using this. And the first one today, right now, is Neo Geo using LaunchBox and RetroArch. Neo Geo is my favorite platform to emulate. So all these links are in the description. You wanna click on download. You're gonna put in your email address. They're gonna email you a link to download it. Next up, we want to grab RetroArch. Now, RetroArch has been around for a long time, and I've used it on everything. If you're running RetroPie, you have RetroArch cores running in the background. Download. I'm on Windows, obviously. There is an x86 version. This is for 32-bit CPUs. This is for 64-bit CPUs. I'm going to grab the 64-bit. It's 110 megabytes. So I already have RetroArch downloaded and LaunchBox is installed. So I'm gonna start up LaunchBox. You'll be prompted like this. We're not gonna get into this right now. We need to set up RetroArch first. Extract RetroArch. You can use WinRAR or 7-Zip. Okay, after it's done extracting, I recommend placing this somewhere safe, somewhere where it's not gonna get moved around. What I'm gonna do is place it in my documents folder. So I'll go to documents, and I'm going to put it in another folder named emulators. You can create a shortcut if you'd like to and place it on your desktop. But in this tutorial, we're gonna be launching everything from LaunchBox itself, so Make sure you have a controller connected to your PC. Now a wired Xbox 360 controller works fine. I'm using a Razer Serval Bluetooth controller and it connects right up with my Windows 10 machine that has Bluetooth built in. So let's go ahead and launch RetroArch. You'll be prompted with a screen like this. Now my controller is not set up from the factory. Let's go ahead and update some stuff. Online updater. Now, I mainly just download a few of these updates when I first start RetroArch. Update core info files. Let that finish extracting and installing before you go to the next one because sometimes RetroArch gets a little confused if you try to download them simultaneously. Update assets. When I started, I should have full screen this already anyway. Update auto config profiles. Update databases. Now you can go through and update all of this if you'd like to. Okay, so if your controller's not working right now, you're gonna press backspace on your keyboard. If you press escape, it's gonna close RetroArch. Settings, which is the little cog wheel here. Input. Input user one binds. This is gonna set up our controller for us. 
So it's showing that my Razer Serval is connected, but it's not working right now. So I need to go through. You can go to bind all, but I prefer just going through and doing it manually. That way, if you mess up, you just go right back. Enter. It's my B. And I'll just run through this real quick. User 1, Y button. Very self-explanatory. Go ahead and set your controller up if it doesn't work already. Okay, so now that you have your controller set up, press backspace or A on your controller. And it's kind of weird because RetroArch uses A to go back and B to select. Kind of like a Japanese input. Now we need to download the Neo Geo Core because that's what we're going to be focusing on in this video. Online Updater. Core Updater. And we need to find Arcade FBA. The one I'm going to be using for Neo Geo is Arcade FBA Alpha 2012 Neo Geo. Download it. It extracts itself. And you're good to go. Another good thing to do is set this up to go full screen when it starts. So we'll go to video. Use full screen mode. So now we have full screen mode every time RetroArch starts. Let's go ahead and quit RetroArch. So we can go ahead and exit out of that folder. We don't need it right now. So now you're going to need some Neo Geo ROMs. I cannot leave links down below. I do not want to. But if you search Google for Neo Geo ROMs, you will have no trouble at all finding them. You can search Google for Neo Geo ROM sets and find some place to download them. You're also going to need the BIOS. So I'm just going to open up my Neo Geo ROMs. And this is what my Neo Geo BIOS looks like. If you search Google for Neo Geo.zip BIOS, one of the first three results is going to be the correct BIOS. All of these stay zipped. Do not unzip your Neo Geo stuff. We need to place this in a safe location, somewhere where it's not going to get moved around. And again, documents, ROMs. So now I have Neo Geo ROMs in here. Let's start LaunchBox. I'm going to click the X here. So this is where it can get a little bit confusing for people. After you've done it a few times, it's a no-brainer. Tools. Import. ROM files. Next. You can add a full folder or we can add files. I'm just going to add files for now. And I'm going to navigate to my ROMs directory, Neo Geo. Highlight all this, or Control A, whatever you want to do. Open. Next. Platform for imported ROMs. You can select RetroArch if you'd like, but I'm going to create one. So I'm just going to name this Neo Geo. We want to scrape this as Arcade. That's the only way we're going to find the art through the LaunchBox scraper. Arcade. Next. Choose an emulator. We're going to have to add one for Neo Geo, so click Add. Emulator name, let's go ahead and call it Neo Geo. I have a capital N and a capital G. Emulator application path. Since we're using RetroArch, we need to click Browse and navigate to where we have RetroArch installed. Emulators, RetroArch, and find the executable, which will be RetroArch application. Double click. Associated platforms. Double click in the associated platform box. Neo, Geo. Now the default command line parameters. What we're going to do here is find the path to the core we want to use, which will be the FBA 2012 Neo Geo core and we need to paste it in here. Down in the description, I'm gonna leave a text file for you. Very easy to follow along. So I have it on my desktop, LaunchBox Neo Geo. We're just gonna copy this here. You need all of it. Copy, 
paste it right in here, the default command line parameters. So that made it super easy for us. Make sure this is checked. Click OK. Next, use files in their current locations so they stay there. Search for game information from the LaunchBox Games database. Yes. Search for and download metadata from Wikipedia. If you'd like to, you can keep that checked also. Next, if you want to go through here and uncheck some of these, you can. I leave them all checked because all we're really going to find for Neo Geo is maybe the front and the back of a box that was created. Next. So when you click next, it's going to prompt you to sign into EMU Movies. Go ahead and create an account over there. A lot of the stuff isn't showing up right now from EMU Movies for me, at least for the Neo Geo. I'm sure NES and SNES has a lot more videos, but for Neo Geo, there's not much there yet. Next. Now you can force using MAME metadata for emulators other than MAME. Use MAME files. Next. Skip clones and prioritize this region. Depending on where you are, what ROM set you have, I'm just going to click North America. Everything seems to work pretty good for me when I do this. Next. So it's detected my games and my BIOS. It looks like it actually left my BIOS out because it knows it's a BIOS, which is a good thing. It won't show up in there for us. Click Finish. Down at the bottom, you'll notice refreshing local metadata from LaunchBox Games Database. Sometimes this can take a little while. What it's going to do is download all of our box art and information for our games. This can take anywhere from a minute to an hour, depending on how many games you have. Sit back and relax. When this is finished, I'll be right back. Okay, so my games were imported successfully. Click OK, and it will populate the list for us. Now you can go ahead and click on one. I'm just going to click on Metal Slug. It's going to automatically launch RetroArch for us and start the game. As you see, select will insert coins. So pressing escape on your keyboard will exit the game. Shut RetroArch down and you should be right back here. If you have the paid version, you can always use your controller to do that. We're going to go to Tools, Options, scroll down until you see Input, Gamepad Joystick. Make sure this is enabled. Buttons, you can set this up if you'd like to so you can zoom in on this menu. But we're going to focus on automation. We're going to set up a button to hold and a button to press while we're holding that button to close the active window. So I'm just going to go with 7 and 12. Now if you're using an Xbox 360 controller or a PS3 controller, you might need to fiddle around with it a little bit. I definitely suggest probably start in your Xbox or PS button in the middle. So you'll set the hold button to start and you'll press the PS button to close the active window. Click OK. It's really up to you how you want to set that up. We're going to run King of Fighters 2003. Now, if I want to run it, I can use my controller now. So right now I just want to show you how to exit. I'm just going to hold my hold button that I set up and press my hotkey button. That's my exit button. Closes RetroArch so you don't have to mess with the keyboard. That's pretty much it for Neo Geo. Now this is the first one on the list right here. This is my favorite system to emulate. Like I said, there's. I really appreciate you watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe because I got a lot more coming. And real quick, if you're on the paid version, I want to go to big box mode. I'm gonna launch it.
So I set this little theme up here. Um, I got all of this from the LaunchBox website. We have the cover flow. There's tons of different options to make this look different. You can customize it to however you want it to look. I really like the cover flow system. It's just easy to navigate. Plus I have children and they like to scroll through this. So, so that's big box. Like I said, I really appreciate you guys watching. I'm going to be doing more of these tutorials, mainly focusing on retro arch and launch box. Like always, thanks for watching.